we like to do fan questions, and we did receive a few so far uh, tonight, one of which is from one of our, our regular listeners, Waldo. And Waldo, if, if you want to follow him on Twitter, it's at Waldo, R-O-R-E-N-1. Um, he sent us an, a mock draft. And obviously, mock drafts are kind of an in vogue thing right now. What do you think of this one? And obviously, he writes, hear me out in this scenario. The Bengals trade A.J. McCarron, a third and a fifth to the to the Giants. Eli's getting close to where Peyton was. So that in that in that respect, they then get um, for trading AJ McCarron a third round pick and a fifth round pick to the Giants, they would get an additional first round pick. Um, so he has the Bengals taking Solomon Thomas, uh, defensive end out of Stanford, Forrest Lamp, an offensive guard, and round and then in round two, Caleb Brantley, a defensive tackle. Round four, Joe Mixon, the running back. Round four at the end with the compensatory pick, Pat Alfine, the center guard. And round five, Josh Reynolds, the wide receiver. I believe he's from Texas A&M, if my memory serves correctly. Um, so what do you think of that of that mock draft, just real quick? I, I'd say it'd be interesting. I don't know if Mixon and Elfline will still be there. I know uh, some people thought Elfline's uh, – combine wasn't as good especially his reps uh, but he still has a pro day to fix that so I think Elfline will probably be back up in the uh, maybe second third round I think Mixon after that uh, ridiculous 40 time below 4-4 he's probably going to be gone by the second round uh, they're all I mean they're obviously all very good players and you never know who's going to fall who's going to drop but uh yeah, I mean, if they got that, I wouldn't complain. I'd like to see how they would use um, Solomon Thomas in that situation because he's not really a pure outside edge guy. He's more of a 3-4 uh, guy or a uh, three technique, kind of like a Gino. He's very good at uh, – he's not the big nose tackle body. He's not the edge guy, but someone who's going to be between the nose tackle and the edge who can penetrate. He can draw double coverage. He can stop and pack the run game, uh, which you know, there's no harm in having more, more than one guy who can do that. Um, so yeah, I'd, I mean, they'd all be very good players. I'd, it'd just be a matter of how many of them actually survive to the Bengals picks in that situation. Uh, I, I like it. I actually like the later, the later picks, um, more than the, the top picks. Uh, I, I'm a little lower on Solomon Thomas than most. Um, I, I think he's a good player. I just don't know if he's a good fit for the Bengals. I, I guess that's where my problem lies. I don't, you know, I, I like you said, he might fit a 3-4 a little bit better than the Bengals. Some people think he's, to use a Mike Mayock term, scheme diverse. Um, I, I don't know. But obviously he's athletic. Obviously he can get to the passer. But I don't see that, that uh, you know, I don't see him being a guy that necessarily is a 10, 12, 15 sack a season guy. And that's kind of what you want when you're picking a guy in the top 10 for a defensive lineman. I, I still like him. I think he's good. I just – I think I'd, I'd prefer a couple of other players besides him, but overall, I think Waldo had a, had a pretty good draft. Do you think so too, Scott? Yeah. I mean, it's hard to fault those guys there. And I think one thing with Thomas, he kind of reminds me of a Justin Smith type who the Bengals took in the top five. I think it was number four overall, who was never, you know, going to be that 10, 12 sat guy, but was a guy who was very good in run support, very good at getting pressure, you know, got his, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 sacks a year. Uh, so, I mean, it'd be hard to go wrong with a guy like that. I mean, obviously, it'd be an upgrade over someone like uh, Michael Johnson, who is also decent, in, uh, but getting a little older. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, thanks to Waldo for sending in that that mock draft, and I appreciate folks sticking with it. We didn't really lose any viewers. or We actually gained viewers. Um, well, well, I was, maybe, maybe that's the key. Maybe I got to get out of here. And you just take over the show, Scott, and that's that's what happens. Uh, that, that's why we I think it's more excitement about the the things messing up than. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, okay, we'll we'll end on this one just because we're running late. Thanks to my technical difficulties and a lot of other topics we've talked about today. K Rhodes in the YouTube chat. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of we've talked about this over the past handful of show uh, of shows. Um, the Bengals are linked to Leonard Fournette based on rumors at number nine, possibly Joe Mixon because of their meetings with him, attendance at pro day. Um, 
you know, whether that's round two, round three. Um, so K Rhodes asks, is it time to move on from Jeremy Hill? Um, especially with a, a, what seems like a very talented group of running backs this year in, in this year's draft. Yeah. I, I mean, it's very hard not to, like you said, even if they don't get a guy in the first round, I mean, like you said, it is a deep running back draft class. I think they, you know, you just can't keep giving the ball to the, to someone expecting different results. I mean, he had a great eight games his rookie year, but you look at 2015, look at 2016, it just hasn't been there. It's been, he's been, you know, slow. He's been indecisive. The, he finally fixed the fumbling issues, but just hasn't had the, uh, you know, outside of the goal line carries, there's just not a lot, I think for fans to be excited about. And, you know, they lost Burkhead. Um, you don't know what you're going to Giovanni Bernard. He's obviously, they, they're saying all the right things about him recovering from the AC, ACL injury, but you just don't know what you're going to get with him. Is he going to be a hundred percent? Is he not? And then the question is, okay, well now you have no, you know, even if you, they say Hill and Bernardo are starters, you have a guy who is injured, a guy who has struggled for two years and no depth. So I, I think they definitely have to be, be looking at adding someone with those 11 picks, whether it's a high pick like a Mixon or a Fournette or a guy, you know, later in the draft, I think somewhere along the line, they have to be grab a running back, at least one. I, I agree with you, especially since they just lost Burkhead and Pierman hasn't resigned either. Um, even if it's a guy that's a running back that can play special teams for you, they're probably, they need to do something. They've really lost a lot of, good players over the past couple of years at that position, James Wilder Jr., Terrell Watson, uh, Burkhead now, and Pierman's not not currently re-signed. So, I mean, a lot of good players, whether they were drafted or not, have, have walked out of the door at that position. So, um, as we know, there's, there's pluses and minuses to Joe Mixon. Um, you know, if they take him, they, we might we might hear some of the the things that fans don't like like to hear about the quote unquote same old Bengals that sort of thing. Um, I lied. I said we were going to end on that question, but we had one more. Uh, let's let's end on this one. And I, I apologize, we can't get to all of them. We're just bringing long tonight. Um, Chris Dill in the YouTube chat wrote: Since Corey Davis, the wide receiver out of is it Eastern Michigan, Western Michigan? Um, he, One of the Michigans? He, yes, somewhere in Michigan, small school in Michigan. Uh, <laughs> isn't, isn't, doing a, isn't doing a pro day, and he didn't work out at the combine. Would you guys be comfortable if they still took him at number nine? I think that wide receiver is on the table at a minimum. Um, it might even be the pick, whether it's Corey Davis, Mike Williams, or maybe even John Ross. There's some mock drafts coming out with him since he – blazed at the at the combine what do you think about this question and and your thoughts on Corey davis and a small school guy not working out um is a little is a little tenuous right yeah it kind of makes you wonder you know is is there an injury or is he just feel that he's that much ahead of the class of wide receivers that uh he doesn't have to because it only only hurt his stock. I mean, obviously on tape, he looks very fast and athletic, seems to do a lot after he catches the ball. Uh, kind of like a Corey Coleman last year, who was more of a guy who did a lot of stuff after he caught it than uh, maybe the dynamic catches. That's kind of the difference between him and Mike Williams. Is Mike Williams is more of the guy who makes those amazing catches, the one-handed catch, the sideline catch, the difficult catch, you know, the catch in traffic. Uh Whereas, you know, Corey Davis is much the more exciting. Hey, uh, I may not make those catches, but when I do catch it, watch out. I'm going to do some cool stuff. And you obviously a Bengals fan, you have to hope he turns out to be better than a Jerome Simpson, who also came from a small school. Granted, um, Coastal Carolina is a little smaller than somewhere like a central Michigan or east or western Michigan, one of the Michigans uh, for the Mac. So you have to. I mean, personally, I've gone on the record saying I'm more of a fan of Mike Williams only because he can make those catches, and I would much rather have a guy who I can trust to make those difficult catches, especially with Dalton getting some of the pressure he's going to get, uh, than a guy who can do amazing things afterwards. Now, that being said, if you know Corey Davis comes out and he's the next Demarius Thomas, you know it's really hard to say that was a bad pick, and because someone like Thomas was a guy. I think he went to Georgia Tech. Uh, you know, they have that tr triple option or that running game. They don't really throw a lot. And so you didn't really know what you were getting. You just knew he was a big athletic guy who seemed to be a good receiver when he got the ball. It was very different because he, uh, Corey Davis has 
put up a ton of production. But if you know they do all the homework and they decide this is the guy, this seems to be a position the Bengals do a good job at drafting. Uh, as much as they've struggled drafting linemen and running backs, the one thing they seem to draft well are wide receivers. Uh, especially for where they take them. You know, Chad Johnson around two, TJ Hushman's out around seven. Uh, some, okay, ignoring uh, Jerome Simpson. Uh, some of the air ones, Tyler Boyd has done a decent job for where he was taken around two so far. Shipley was really good before he got hurt. Uh, so, yeah, I'd, I'd say if he's the pick, I, I can't fault the position just because it's if it's the best player, I'd be cool with it. I don't know. Do you agree, disagree? Uh, you know, if I, if I'm picking, I, I've I've agreed with you on this. Um, in terms of wide receiver, I like I, I haven't watched as much tape on Corey Davis as, as some other guys. Um, the small school thing scares me. The fact that he's not working out scares me. Um, he's explosive. He can catch very well. He can do from what I've seen. He can do. You know, he can catch the deep ball. He can catch the short routes, but. His route tree, from what I've seen, is a little bit limited. Someone called me out on that a little while ago in Cincy Jungle. Um, I think Mike Williams still can do a bit more of the across the middle, some of the tough catches, some of the more, like you said, the one-handers. That uh, To me, if, if you have Mike Williams across from A.J. Green, you have Brandon LaFell in there, you have Tyler Boyd in there, all of a sudden you have a scary offense. Now, obviously, you have to protect the passer to be able to get those guys the ball, but um, – you know, the, the whole thing with the Bengals offense, and this has been through Andy Dalton's career, everybody always says you got to surround Andy Dalton with talent. You have to surround him with talent. They did that with Sanu, Jones, and Green, uh, and Eifert, and, you know, all these guys. And now all of a sudden Sanu and Jones are gone. Boyd's there. LaFell, you know, he doesn't have that, that much time left. I mean, he's in his 30s. A.J. Green, surprisingly, is closing in on 30 years old as well. So, um, you know, I, I think at some point, you, you may just want to load up on offense. And, and to me, I would take Mike Williams slightly over Corey Davis. Um, I, I'd also be inclined to um, maybe even look in the second round because there might be some talented guys. I know I, I'm uh, labeled as the um, USC homer, but Juju Smith-Schuster had a pretty good combine. Um, pretty, you know, he could be there at the early, early part of the second round. Um, there's the other gentleman who is the receiver opposite of John Ross. His name escapes me um, at the moment. Uh, I can't remember his name. But he uh, he also had an, um, a gigantic amount of touchdowns and is probably going to be available in the second or third round. So, um, you know, there's a lot of guys outside of the first round that I think could be, could be valuable players. But, you know, I think if you see some of those – top defensive ends go, those defensive linemen go, and you're sitting there, maybe Fournette goes, and you're sitting there and you go, well, we've got Mike Williams, we've got Corey Davis, maybe load up on offense, right? What if they did, I'll throw this at you, what if they grab someone like Curtis Samuel? Would that be ridiculous or would you like that? Um, Cause he kind of, feels, I don't know. I, I don't think he's a pure wide receiver. He's more like maybe a Percy Harvin type, a guy who, uh, or Braxton Miller when he came yeah. last year, where yeah. he's going to do both. He's athletic. I don't know if he's with any, but if you're looking, you know, middle of the round, you know, second, third, fourth round. Yeah, he's kind of a. If, if see, I, I love the idea of those those types of players. You know, a Dexter McCluster. Uh, you know, that Tyreek Hill. They, you know, that was a guy that that really exploded on the scene this year. They could do a lot of different stuff. I love guys like that. I just don't trust the Bengals coaching staff to be creative enough to get to mine that goal. You know what I mean? So I, I, I just, I just don't, tr I just don't, uh, I just don't trust them to do that. So, um, I mean, I like the player. I, I think he could be a really cool gadget type of guy. Maybe they can say, you know, a guy like Samuel could be like a, a Andrew Hawkins type of guy and, you know, let, Let's let him, you know. Let's let's have fun with this guy and do shovel passes and little short routes, and they could do that. I just Ken Zampezi's already coming off a pretty poor year as an offensive coordinator. I don't know that I would trust him with a guy like that personally with a big role. Yeah, to your what point. What about you? I I would have to agree based on everything we've seen. I think they would probably have one or two plays for someone like him. It'd be the same formation, the same situation. 
Nate's third and six, and he's split to the right. Guess what they're going to do? <laughs> it's a wide receiver screen again. Uh, yeah, they tend to be very predictable with their uh, formations and personnel. Yeah. Yeah. And I think once you get more explosive personnel, which they didn't necessarily have last year, you know, they had – they had guys, you know, once A.J. Green went out, they had guys who could catch passes and do some nice things and LaFell and Tyler Boyd, but they didn't have a gadget guy. They didn't have a speed guy. They didn't They didn't have a lot of these guys. So, um, you know, you got to hope maybe Cody Cork turns into a, a pretty solid, you know, number four bottom end of the roster type of guy. Maybe you draft a guy relatively high and, and uh, groom him for a good role. And, and, you know, maybe some good things will happen this year on that side of the ball. No more, Scott? Yeah, I mean, yeah. sorry, I thought I was muted. Yeah, I mean, no, uh, you have to hope they do something. And I know they signed LaFell for two years, but I think most fans are hoping that that is not their solution at wide receiver is LaFell. And I think uh, you, you obviously have to hope for Boyd's upside. He had some decent games last year. I don't think he flashed, you know, what, uh, enough to make people think, wow, this is, you know, the next A.J. Green. Maybe he's the next Marvin Jones if, if we're lucky. Um, but that being said, you'd like to think there's someone else there that they can add in that mix. Uh, you know, Corey, Cody core is a long shot to be that guy, but if it comes to the draft, you know, hopefully they find someone, if it comes as a high pick that, uh, could be the pick. It, it seems to be a weird draft there. The positions that seem to be, to have the most value at number nine don't seem to be the positions that scream something the Bengals need. So that's why I think a lot of people are looking at things like maybe, um, wide receiver or something because they don't see them reaching for, you know, a, a pure speed edge rusher or something like that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, this is a year where the possibilities are quite, you know, quite open and uh, you know, you don't want to say necessarily that they want to take the best player available, but they still might do that. I mean, you don't want to reach either, but uh, at, at number nine with a lot of needs on the table, you, you might not want to get too cute. So uh, we'll see. Great questions tonight, guys.